Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the impact of cancer on children and youth. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the impact of cancer on children and youth, Alana McLaughlin. And as many of you know, Alana has been with us on a number of occasions. And Alana, let me uh, welcome you to the show uh, this morning and uh, tell you how delighted we are to uh, have you with us this morning and to think in terms of the topic that you're dealing with this morning, uh, the impact of cancer and you, uh, on cancer on, on uh, the impact of uh, the, the impact of cancer, cancer on, on children, children and, and youth. youth. <laughs> okay, and then uh, what we'd like to do before we get into that topic, let's have you to give us some information about your background, your education, and uh, some of your experiences and some of the things that were important in terms of leading you to us this morning. <laughs> well, um, as you've uh, previously stated, my name is Alana McLaughlin. I am 11 years old. I go to John Early Museum Magnet Middle School, and I am currently in sixth grade, about to transition to seventh. Um, I am heavily involved in programs outside of school, like this summer, well, from June 1st to the 6th, I will be going to Washington, D.C. for the Junior National Young Leaders Conference mm -hmm. of 2014. and. Um, from June 8th through the 20th, I'll be going to Western Kentucky University's Center for Gifted Studies to attend their SCATs program for 6th and 8th graders. And so I am heavily involved in lots of other things, including my church and school programs, the debate team, and other things like that. And go on. Uh, <laughs> um, I try to help out anywhere I can, really, uh, at church, and I sign up for as many programs as I can get into. My summer's pretty packed. Um, and I'm also heavily involved in my school's band. I play trumpet mm -hmm. and music outside of school. I play um, piano as well. And mm -hmm. so basically, I am a very involved person, and I like to help out and do whatever I can. Very energetic person, I might add, too. Well, uh, yeah. and. Um, so basically, to learn more about both of these programs, you can go to Western Kentucky University's Center for Gifted Studies website. Just uh, Google WKU Center for Gifted Studies. And to learn more about the Junior National Young Leaders Conference, you can Google JRNYLC2014, and it'll probably uh, direct you to the website. Now, both these programs are uh, very good programs to uh, get interested in, but they are sort of costly. Mm -hmm. But um, I was luckily, lucky enough to get a $1,000 grant to attend Western Kentucky, mm -hmm. so I'm thankful for that. And um, so, yeah, they're, they're really good programs to enroll in, if, especially if you want your child to be out the house for the summer or mm -hmm. do something fun away from home. It's all pretty fun. Very good. And Lana, you wanted to uh, talk with, about... Uh, the impact of cancer on children and youth uh, today. And let's get it started by talking about uh, cancer itself. Let's, uh, uh, for the next uh, couple of minutes on this segment, let's talk about <coughs> the uh, uh, disease of cancer itself. Well, a lot, well, when a lot of people hear cancer, they usually think, well, what is cancer and what causes cancer? Is cancer uh, spreadable? Or Well, cancer is, is cancer is a class of diseases characterized by out of control cell growth. There are over 100 different types of cancer and each is classified by the type of cell that is initially affected. Leg cancer, breast cancer, brain cancer. Just what cell is affected. Cancer harms the body when damaged cells divide uncontrollably to form lumps or masses of tissue called tumors. Except in the case of leukemia where cancer prohibits normal blood function by abnormal cell division in the bloodstream. Tumors can grow and interfere with the digestive, nervous, and cir circulatory uh, systems, and they can also release hormones that alter body function. Tumors that stay in one spot and demonstrate limited growth and are generally considered to be benign. Um, more dangerous tumors form when two things occur. A cancerous cell manages to move throughout the body using the blood or lymph systems, destroying healthy tissue in a process called invasion, and two, this, that cell manages to divide and grow, making new blood vessels to feed itself in a process called angio, angiogenesis, which is really hard to pronounce. And so basically, how cancer spreads is uh, scientists reported in Natural Communications, the October 2012 issue, that they discovered a new they discovered an important clue as to why cancer uh, cells spread. 
it has something to do with their adhesion properties. Mm -hmm. Certain mole molecular interactions between cells and scaffolding mm -hmm. that holds them in place causes them to become unstuck at the original tumor Very site, good. and they become dislodged and move on and then reattach themselves <coughs> to a new site. Very good, and of course, Lana, uh, we accept that as an explanation of cancer. We're gonna to have to take this first commercial break, mm -hmm. and then we'll come back and get into the impact of cancer. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. The uh, topic is the impact of cancer on children and youth. And uh, our guest is Alana McLaughlin, and she's given us some information in reference to the causes of uh, cancer and the various types of cancer. And so Alana, let's pick up uh, in this segment of the show by talking about uh, some of the methods whereby we may be able to prevent cancer. And then next segment, we'll go into uh, cancer teens and youth. Go on from <coughs> that perspective. Now, as I previously stated in the first segment, if you're just tuning in, uh, cancer is a class of diseases characterized by out of control cell growth. Now, there are over 100 different types of cancer, and uh, most uh, really common ones would be breast cancer, leukemia, things like that. And mm. so now, now it's a cancer prevention. Now, there is no official, official way that you can just like automatically just not get cancer because, I mean, it could happen to anybody at any time, anywhere. So please do remember that even doing these things, you are not completely safe from cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention um, said that uh, sponsored a supplement issue of the Journal of Adolescent Health about ways to prevent cancer with a focus on youth and children. Mm -hmm. The authors are experts from many different profes professions showing the importance of working together to protect youth from cancer. Now, examples of how you can protect children and youth um, from ages 15 to 39 mm -hmm. from cancer would be um, getting vaccines, eating healthy food, and getting enough uh, physical activity. Um, now, back, going back to f physical activity, that is really important to even prevent obesity mm -hmm. and to just live by, maintain a healthy lifestyle and eating healthy foods can also help with obesity. And eating healthy foods is just basically something that can help you just a long way in life. I mean, it can prevent cavities, prevent rotting teeth, rotting insides. So basically, <coughs> those, also, th those are not just two ways to uh, keep away from cancer, but they're also two ways to live a long and safer life. Now, um, another example of how to um, sort of prevent yourself from mm -hmm. cancer would be reducing harmful exposures, mm -hmm. avoiding sunbathing or indoor tanning bed use. Now, <coughs> um, I've heard many cases of indoor tanning mm -hmm. beds uh, causing skin cancer and stuff like that, and also quitting smoking and other tobacco use. Now, uh, this would really tie into lung cancer because the more you smoke, the more you damage your lungs, and then the uh, harder it could be to breathe. And now um, another way is limiting alcohol use. And that can also help you um, prevent being poisoned by something that could be in alcohol. And also limiting radiation dose, uh, dosages during medical, um, medical exam procedures. Like so not doing a thousand x-rays a day could really help that because as you know, x-rays do use radiation and other things that you may not know use radiation like the sun or stuff like that. So avoiding staying out in, th in the sun too much, trying to uh, sunbathe or indoor tan or keeping away from tanning, period, can really help with, uh, with preventing cancer. Now, uh, now, another thing is cancer in young people. 
Adolescents and young adults ages 15 to 39 are much more likely to be diagnosed with cancer than children under the age of 15, which was a really interesting fact that I found out this morning. The most common types of cancer seen in adolescents and young adults are lymphoma, leukemia, germ cell tumors, melanoma, central nervous system tumors, sarcomas, and breast, cervical, li liver, and thyroid cancers. Now, um, these are all very um, common types of cancers that you could hear about. Um, if you look up, go to um, cdc.org or cancer.gov or just websites like that, they could help you with cancer. Now, earlier, I did look up something about cancer that really did shock me. Mm. The um, highest, um, so I went to a um, race cancer website which talked about which races are more common to have death rates in cancer and more likely to get cancer. And did you know that the leading uh, race in cancer are African Americans, mm -hmm. uh, African American men. Um, out of the men's uh, division, African American men, well, 532.5 out of every 100,000 people in the United uh, States, black men have cancer. And also the leading death rate in cancer is also a black men. Now for women, women, the leading race in women's cancer are Caucasian women, but in the leading death rate, black women are the uh, most, are more likely <coughs> to die from cancer. Now to recap, basically what I just said was that Caucasian women are more likely to get cancer, but African American women are more likely to die from cancer. And black men are more likely to get and die from cancer because African Americans are the leading people in uh, cancer populations. And so basically I found that that was a very interesting fact in that um, American Indian and Alaskan Native people are actually the least likely to die and the least likely to get cancer, which was a very interesting fact that I saw. And so, so basically, African American teens, if you, if you read the statistic about African American men, just think about our African American teens, like what they'll go through. Because, see, once you get into a teen, you'll, you'll eventually grow up to be a man. And then you have a high risk of getting cancer more than any other race in the United States. And they had like lots of other races in this uh, graph that they showed. And so basically, that's why I'm encouraging um, it, not just the African American community, but every community to really take these guidelines, like avoiding sunbathing and sun tanning and eating healthy and having more, uh, having more like physical activity, like gym classes, going to the YMCA, going to free gyms to really stay away from cancer because um, as I read earlier in the first segment, it is not something that you want to have. It's um, abnormal cell growth, mm -hmm. and that is not a very desirable thing that you would want. I mean, because it, it affects your life. It affects, it could affect where you could go. You may not be able to travel. You may, you may be bedridden for life, all because you decided, hey, let's, let's go sunbathe or let's go suntan or hey, let's eat the junkiest food we can find. But if you just take simple steps, you can live a longer and healthy life. And that is it's really simple. Just eat healthy and go outside like twice a week, run around, walk the dog, jump rope, do, play a sport. It's all really simple in a way to leading not only just a cancer free life, but a healthy life. Like who wants to die early? I mean, you can take these simple guidelines, eating healthy, just changing little things in your life to make it last longer, which is really simple. And like that means avoiding uh, stopping at McDonald's every day, even if you don't feel like cooking, mm -hmm. avoiding stopping at Sonic or um, places like that, all just to live longer. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that you can't go there, period. I mean, because if you want to go there, then that's your life. But I mean, going there every day is not unhealthy because even if you get like a chicken salad, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. So you have to have everything in moderation, basically. And, and Lana, let me uh, stop you uh, for the uh, end of this uh, second segment and make preparations for the uh, uh, third segment, final segment, and we'll talk about teen and uh, youth cancer. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break.
Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. The uh, topic is the impact of cancer on teens and uh, youth. And we have with us to uh, continue our conversation, Alana McLaughlin. And Alana, I hardly can call this a continuation of a conversation because it appears to me that uh, you came well prepared to talk about uh, this topic, uh, cancer and its impact on uh, children and youth. And so let's continue that, uh, our conversation in reference to that, uh, that particular topic. Now, um, if, you, for, uh, if you're just tuning in to the last segment of the show for the day, um, in the first segment, I talked about my background, education, my name, where I go to school, and things like that. And also, I talked about what cancer is and what could cause cancer. Now, cancer is a class of diseases characterized by out-of-control cell growth. And um, popular forms of cancer are uh, lymphoma, leukemia, germ cell tumors, melanoma, sarcomas and breast cancer, cervical cancer, liver, and thyroid cancer. <coughs> and that's basically some uh, famous types of cancer. Now, I really want to get into children and youth. Now, in the second segment, I talked about um, the leading race in cancer, which happens to be African Americans. Now, in the uh, men's section of cancer, African American men are the leaders in having cancer and dying from cancer. And in the women's section, um, African American women are more prone to die from cancer, while Caucasian women are more likely to get cancer but be able to overcome it. Now, children and youth in um, and children and youth and how cancer affects them. Now, I recently read a book that was called The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. And the book was about a girl named Hazel Grace Lancaster. And she is a cancer patient. And so she goes to a self-help group where she uh, meets a boy and she falls in love with him only for him to die, uh, to die of cancer before her. Now, this book really touched me in a special place because the book made you really be able to feel Hazel's emotions and it was so well written so well projected that I cried from chapter to chapter mm -hmm. and now um, the movie for the fault in our stars um, starring Shailene Woodley actually uh, comes out June 6th and they're having um, a special preview of it for uh, some time but basically the Fault in Our Stars is just a book I would encourage reading mm -hmm. and it talked about really how Hazel thought that her lungs sucked to being lungs because she had lung cancer mm -hmm. and she had to walk around with an oxygen tank everywhere she went and she had to sleep with it and it just made me really feel for Hazel because I mean I don't have cancer but I, I, I felt her emotions mm -hmm. and I could connect with her and I could see how she felt and how sad it was to have cancer and then it talked about other cancer patients and her friends that she met at the support group. Um, and so basically the book is a really good book. It's heartwarming, but it's also heartbreaking. And I really applaud John Green for being able to channel these cancer patients and their emotions like he was them in, a, in another life. And the book is just outstanding. I mean, it's won various awards and it's by far my favorite book at the moment. And so <clears throat> the book is available on Amazon, iBooks, Kindle Fire, bookstores, probably anywhere they sell books, they'll probably sell the Fault in Our Stars. I mean, I saw copies at Kroger. The, it's everywhere. And the movie is especially good because I went to, um, there was an event called Demand Our Stars where the cast and John Green came to Nashville and I was privileged enough to be able to see them and they had a question and answer in a small preview of the movie and I know that well since I'll be in Washington uh, for the Junior National Young Leaders Conference I won't be able to see the movie when it first comes out but I would love to see the movie because it's really just it's indescribable I mean the book I, I, I gave my copy to my grandmother to read it because it's that good and I never recommend books to anybody but I really just it's, it's a book that you have to read. I mean, even if you're not into love stories or if you're, even if you're into horror stories, I mean, it's, still, it's a book for everyone, really. No matter what you're into or who you are, what age you are, it's, 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 it's a really nice book. Do you think that people get a better understanding of what cancer is by reading this fictional novel? I, don't, I think that people will get a better understanding of how cancer affects you, not like 
um, body wise, but emotionally, like the um, you depression, like in the book they mentioned that depression was a side effect of cancer. And it, it'll really help you channel feelings that you didn't know you had. Because if you need a good read, then I recommend The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. And he also has another book, uh, Looking for Alaska, that I'm about to start. That's really good. And I can't exactly tell you the plot now, but I can <laughs> really assure you that The Fault in Our Stars is a book that you need to read. If, if anything, if you just, not for like, if you need to do a project on what cancer is, The Fault in Our Stars is not a book that's all about, hey, cancer is so-and-so-and-so. This is a book about how it feels to have cancer and what cancer really does to you emotionally. It's just, it's an all-around amazing book. I mean, I, I, I applaud John Green for it, really. And so another statistic in uh, youth and children with cancer is, um, well, the, the statistics for it. Adolescents and young adults ages 15 to 39 are more likely to get cancer than people under the age of 15 or over the age of 39. Now, basically saying that that bridge from 15 to 39, this is really um, where you're more likely to get cancer because you're, you're younger and plus um, teenagers nowadays are sun tanning and drinking and smoking. And these, those are all causes of cancer. I mean, smoking could cause, cause lung cancer. Drinking could cause liver cancer. Sun tanning could cause skin cancer. And, um, it's just, there's so many things that you could do to prevent this. I mean, cancer is, isn't something that you're just going to have that it's like, it's so assured that you're gonna have. I mean, it's not assured that you're not gonna have it. You can do simple things like eat healthy, go outside once or twice a week, and just do small things to improve your life. <laughs> and just, you take these simple steps and you can lead not even just a cancer-free life, but a healthy life. Like, who wants to die early because they just ate junk food all their lives? I mean, you can stay fit. Go, um, go to gym classes at school. Go to the YMCA. Do all these small things. W walk your dog once. Just do all these small things to just help out in the world. And I mean, not even just, not even just in your body, but in the world. I mean, because if we um, cut down on all this, then we'll have a higher just like a higher rate for um, maybe even more Olympians like going to the Olympics because people will be more healthy and have more energy to do Olympic sports. And maybe, just maybe, we can lead a healthier society than we have right now. I mean, people, I know people who go to McDonald's every morning and get four or five drinks and four or five uh, pieces of nuggets and stuff. And I mean, that could be, you could think that's good for you, but, and I'm not gonna say that it's not good for you because there are websites, there are websites that are saying, hey, it's made of good things and hey, it's made of bad things. Mm -hmm. And I don't work at McDonald's, so I don't personally know, mm -hmm. but too much of a good thing is a bad thing and too much of a bad thing is an even worse thing. Mm -hmm. And so basically, just eat a salad once or twice a week, you know, just small things. I'm not saying, hey, just throw away every sweet thing just you can still eat candy i eat candy but i don't eat candy every single day of my life so there's small things that can help you lead a healthy life and so alana after this long dissertation and over the last uh <clears throat> minute and a half uh do you think that uh many of the uh, uh children and adolescents within your uh, age range uh, understand exactly how important it is to uh to come involved in preventing cancer and to sort of listen to what you have to say in reference to that? I don't because <laughs> I, I know a lot of kids who eat um, candy and McDonald's and Burger King every day and I don't think they really realize what they're doing to their bodies <laughs> and how, ma how many diseases they're putting themselves in the middle of. I mean because you can not only get cancer from this but I'm talking about obesity and just certain things like that all because you decided it would be just nice to eat greasy, slimy food every single morning that's made with chemicals and objects you don't even know of. And so basically, just live a healthy life and do things to help your, um, help your health. And I mean, just, it can lose weight, make you feel better, more energetic, make you feel lighter, help your self-esteem. It's just, there's nothing wrong with being a little healthy. Okay, and let me, uh, over the last uh, 20 seconds that we have here, 
Thank you for bringing that excellent information by today in reference <coughs> to our young people and our cancer and not only young people, but I think you've given us additional information for all people. And of course, let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank, Thank you, you and, and good, good morning. morning.
Thank you, and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is All In All Stars uh, Community Empowerment, and we're fortunate to have with us uh, three members from various community organizations to talk about some of the things that are going on in the uh, community this morning. Uh, our first guest is Mr. Nolan Starnes. Uh, and of course, Mr. Starnes uh, is uh, with uh, Ms. Frierson, and uh, Ms. Frierson is with Mr. Starnes, Ms. Frierson, and uh, Mr. Raglan. And of course, let me welcome all three of you uh, to the show this morning, uh, Mr. Starnes and uh, Ms. Frierson and uh, Mr. Raglan. Let's start off by uh, having you, uh, each of you, to give us some information about your background, That's your right. education, and some of your experiences. And uh, after that, then we'll get in, uh, into the second segment and we'll have an opportunity to uh, move farther into uh, your show this morning. Let's start off with you, uh, Mr. Starnes. Yes, sir. Okay, so my name is Nolan Starnes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, born and raised here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, went to Weiss Creek Comprehensive High School. Okay, but I, I actually graduated from uh, Cone Adult High School. Okay. Uh, from there, I got involved in an EMT program at Volunteer State Community College. Uh, did not get a chance to finish. Uh, at that point in my life, I was straddling the fence. Okay, uh, not only was I in school, but uh, I was also in the street. Okay, um, I was in the street pretty heavy. And uh, so I, I ended up catching a, uh, a charge, a federal charge, by the age of 22 years old. Uh, so, and I caught that charge uh, probably about a month before I was able to finish up the EMT program. And uh, it was very heartbreaking, but uh, so by the, by the age of 24, uh, I started a five year uh, prison sentence in the uh, Federal Bureau of Prisons. Okay, uh, so I served time in a few different states and cities. And uh, so it was through that uh, turmoil uh, it's when I found myself, I found God, um, and so uh, the Lord blessed me with, uh, you know, this, this vision of all in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the result, we're here sitting with you right now. Very good, and, and the rest is history, uh, <clears throat> as we might say. And of course, Ms. Frosten, let's have you to give us some information about your background, uh, followed by uh, Mr. Raglan. Yes, good morning. Mm -hmm. I am Nella Miss Pearl Frierson. Mm -hmm. I am the sixth born of 10 children. We were born here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I have five grown daughters, five grandchildren. And what I'm here doing is my educational background, I graduated, I'm sorry, I went to uh, Belmont College, become a Montessori directress, which is a teacher. And um, that didn't pan out because it wasn't my calling. And I went to cosmetology school and I've been doing that since 1989. And that's what, I, that's what my professional background is. And so um, right now what I'm doing is Brooklyn Heights Community Garden. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm giving back to the community to help the community to, to rebuild itself, uh, to help the children with their self-esteem, self-awareness, and uh, also is great for our bodies and our minds and our spirits and our souls as well. So um, that's just a little bit about me. Mm -hmm. Very good. <clears throat> and of course, Mr. Raglan, what about you, your background, your education, and some information? I was born in Knoxville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. My name is Richard Raglan. I was born in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I was raised in Atlanta. Uh, went to Spartanburg Tech in South Carolina. Uh, my history is pretty much different. I started in the music industry. As mm -hmm. I started in the music industry, I changed uh, my whole passion because I went to Spartanburg Tech for the social degree. I uh, went in business. Started my music business in Atlanta, moved it from Knoxville, then I actually got out of it. Started a, a health preventive business called Mo Better Health and Life. It's the part to help young men uh, educate them about the knowledge of their self and also be awareness of their health. How to, to prevent any sick, uh, uh, early sickness and also to have leadership skills. And that's one of the main things that I pretty much started actually as well when I got a music business in Atlanta, Georgia, to help them to have leadership skills and have self-fulfilling uh, accomplishments for themselves. And uh, I'm a, uh, I travel around, do a, a lot of uh, motivational, uh, empowering speaking to a lot of young men and also older adults and uh, older uh, 
of dogs. Very good. <clears throat> and of course, we're going to take our uh, first commercial break. And then when we come back, we'll uh, move into the second segment of this uh, show, which will give each of you an opportunity to elaborate upon the programs that you represent here. Uh, your program dealing with young men, uh, your program dealing with community uh, gardening, and of course your uh, empowerment program. Okay. And of course we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Mr. Stearns, Ms. Frierson, and Mr. Raglan, uh, three community leaders talking about community empowerment. Uh, let's look at uh, your program, uh, Mr. Stearns. Yes, sir. And, uh, to, I think the name of your program is All In Stars. Is that uh, the uh, correct name? Uh, it's a mentoring no, program, is no, it No, sir, it's, it's All In, All Stars. Stars. Okay, let's talk about that and, and the purpose for that program. And then Ms. Frierson will give us some information about community gardening and uh, Mr. Rag Raglan will round us out for this uh, second segment. Yes, sir. Well, All In All Stars, first of all, is a youth mentoring program, okay? Uh, we made the decision to start off as an urban youth mentoring program, okay? Just because they're so, the, ur the urban cities uh, need so much um, at this point, uh, you know, we, we have to cater to them first. Um, but uh, the mentoring program is innovative, is, is unique, and it's, it's innovative and unique because it's centered around STEM, okay? STEM is an acronym for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, some people don't know that, as a matter of fact, but um, so there's a unique way uh, of, of mentoring and empowering uh, the youth uh, just by simply um, teaching them about energy, okay? Uh, we don't grow up learning about energy and the true power of energy and how that energy uh, is the same source that our hearts beat from, our blood flows, uh, flows from, you know, things of that nature. And uh, that's something that uh, the public school system does not do. They don't teach the sciences, uh, they don't teach how the sciences uh, 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 integrates within us as human beings and yeah, we are part of the sciences ourselves yes that? sir mm -hmm. you know uh we, we are <clears throat> part of this universe mm -hmm. uh, this whole universe is one big math equation mm -hmm. and so uh, all in is um is basically founded to help these uh youths uh, gain a, 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 a true understanding of themselves mm -hmm. and uh, uh, uh and, and the true power that they hold within themselves now uh all in simply means, uh, you know, all in is slang, okay? And it simply means that uh, you're committed, okay? Or you're dedicated to a particular action or plan, scheme, whatever you want to call it, okay? And so in order to understand this knowledge, you just simply have to be committed, okay? And so we're asking these, the, 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 the urban youth, uh, along with their families and, and, and parents and teachers and uh, you know, things of that nature to be all in, be all in with this plan because we, we can guarantee uh, a, a change, you know, if we can just get everybody to be all in. With because this plan. it all leads again to what we call earlier community empowerment. Is yes, that, sir. Is that exactly what we. Now, Ms. Frosting, from your perspective, uh, how, how does uh, the program that you're involved in help what he's doing? Okay, the way my program helps, um, like you said, with energy, the uh, 
food will sustain the mind. And so if they are um, able to get the nutrients that they need in order to blossom into the people that they are, the children that they're gonna be, then they can uh, have more energy and know how the fruit and vegetables grow. And being that Brooklyn Heights Community Garden is located in a food desert, and our community has split up, if you will. We don't know each other anymore. We scared of each other. So one day I was thinking, my mantra, my personal mantra has always been, start where you are, use what you have, do what you must, get busy. So I kept thinking, all the children would come to my house, because I'll be outside jump roping, hula hooping, riding a bike, waving at the children, just interacting. I do hair, so I was teaching the young girls how to do hair. The young guys, since they started having locks, I was teaching them how to groom, but I was just doing it because that's what I naturally normally do. So I said, I was thinking, I need to go more in depth, because they keep coming, I gotta give them something that's more solid. Mm -hmm. And so being that my background is being a teacher, um, and I started thinking, what could I do? So I had some, uh, some land right across the street from my house. I live at 1830 Haines Street. Mm -hmm. The uh, Brooklyn Heights Community Garden is 1833. And so I called the man who owned it and I asked him, listen, this is my vision. Uh, all these young children in the neighborhood are obese. They, they're not doing anything constructive. I would like to have a community garden. He said, that's fine. So that's what Brooklyn Heights uh, started in 2010. Uh, we're still in the infancy stages because I'm still learning how to incorporate the whole community. And any and everybody's welcome. And uh, some people don't want to be on grass and weeds and growing stuff. So the, compu the computers, they can help with the computers, getting people to uh, know about our shoe drives. Because the way we fund it, we have uh, uh, shoe drives. And uh, September 6th, we're going to have a massive shoe drive. And um, I partnered with Mr. Nolan Starnes, and he's a massive, he knows how to get the job done. He's consistent, persistent, and he has the kids that will come to, to help. And so that is a, is a plus and a must. We must link together. We must stop this obesity. We must stop this ignorance. We must stop uh, being in the dark about where our food, food comes from. And uh, we must, what the Brooklyn Heights is really doing is teach them self-esteem, self-awareness, teaching them how to take ownership and uh, make something beautiful. Take, a, take the rock if you want to, paint that rock, place it just right. Look how beautiful it is. But a bunch of rocks scattered all around is just a bunch of rocks. So um, that's how, and plus what he does with me also, he, he teaches me how to be more organized. And I really thank him for that. And so all of this really means community empowerment, reaching out for the entire community. That is exactly and how right. does that fit into uh, what you do, uh, Mr. Raglan? Uh, one, of, one of the main reasons it fit into me with Mo Better Health and Life is that uh, like she said, it's, it's to, be able, to be able to have self-control. Mm -hmm. I teach pretty much self-control and also to have a sense of leadership. But you have to have the sense of leadership by able, being able to have the right food, mm -hmm. water, uh, uh, the vitamins and the minerals that's coming from the earth. Mm -hmm. we, must back, we must return back to the earth. And I teach about love, mm -hmm. number one. It has to be said. It has to be you have to say it a lot, and you have to let them know that you love them. Mm -hmm. I teach a lot of these young men, I love you. Say mm -hmm. it, mean it, mm -hmm. and act on it. Mm -hmm. But take ownership back in you. You have to, you have to, you have to uh, gain a lot of self of, 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 of ownership in yourself and, and just feeling good about who you are mm -hmm. and who you really are. And when you really know who you really are, you're gonna, it's just going to sprout like a, a plant, mm -hmm. like a fruit like a vegetables in the morning, and you're going to feel have that feeling all day long. And <clears throat> finally, it's simply to say that the love that you're talking about is only what? Respect, understanding, and goodwill. Right. Yes, which sir. is to say, I think that if we bring all of these together and these ideas of body and energy and et cetera, and you uh, anchor it in this idea of love, L-O-V-E, right. respect, understanding, goodwill, that touches everybody, and it's different from the kind of uh, platonic kind of love. Yes. It's uh, the romantic kind of For love, sure. and et cetera. And we're all embarrassed by romantic love, but respect, understanding, goodwill. And of course, we'll be back with you following this very, very short commercial break. Yeah, I'm trying to get more equipment in. 
yourself in. Okay. Yes. I'm locked in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you. Welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to uh, Mr. Starnes, uh, Ms. Frierson, and uh, Mr. Raglan, and they're giving us some information in reference to uh, ways to improve uh, community empowerment and how we might be able to successfully work uh, with the community. Uh, Mr. Starnes, let's start off by giving you an opportunity over the last segment here to uh, simply talk about some of the things that you consider to be the most important uh, aspects of what you do, and Ms. Frierson will do the same, and as well as Mr. Ragland, and we'll give each of you an opportunity to, to, to build your program here this morning. Yes, sir. Well, uh, most importantly, uh, I, I'll go ahead and put the, the nation first, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, the nation say that we need more uh, scientists, more engineers, you know, more doctors, uh, astronauts, things like that, okay? Uh, so all in is that component to inspire, okay? Now, uh, at the very least, you know, if a, if a child uh, does not choose an, a STEM-related career, at the very least, that child will leave our program knowing exactly who they are, okay? Uh, which results in um, um, their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you know, they respect themselves a lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, like what you said earlier, you know, uh, the, the love, mm -hmm. you know, not, not being afraid to love. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And, this, and for, for an example, because, you know, we, you know, as we go over uh, uh, sciences such as physics, uh, agriculture, astronomy is very important, astrology, uh, and, you know, you can just go on and on and on. But for example, with agriculture, once they learn how to farm, okay, we can automatically tra transition that into their everyday lives mm -hmm. by learning how to plant seeds in their own mind mm -hmm. or in their own vision. Good. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, staying focused on that, mm -hmm. watering it by staying in motion, mm -hmm. okay? Motion is a scientific term, mm -hmm. actually, okay? You can't be blessed or you can't have a vision without putting some motion with it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And so therefore, your fruits will grow uh, 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 from your actions or from those plants, I mean, uh, seeds that you planted in your mind. And so uh, that's, that's, that's just the same as, as, as agriculture, sir. Uh, Ms. Farson, how has the uh, community reacted to uh, your community garden? Well, the community has uh, reacted very positively. Mm -hmm. We're still in the emphasis stages because we're still uh, growing the, um, the core group, as mm -hmm. we must say. But what they've done, the, the Brooklyn Heights Community Garden is not uh, fenced in. Mm -hmm. It has never been vandalized. And a couple of times when I've uh, gotten up in the morning, I see some people over there just pulling weeds and they're not even on schedule. They're just doing, just doing it because the love of, and they see the vision also. Um, the one thing that Brooklyn Heights Community Garden, we, we're working on being self-containing and it's uh, financially, that's where the shoe dryers come in. We want to partner with um, the colleges, Vanderbilt, Meharry, Fizz, um, TSU. We want to also partner with the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, give everybody an opportunity to work together as one because that's one thing that's missing in this, in this society. We have uh, become separate mm -hmm. from each other. And we, 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 don't know how to integrate it back in. So Brooklyn Heights Community Garden is, is making the first step of saying, look, is this simple? 
You got some old shoes in your closet? Mm -hmm. We need them old shoes. Mm -hmm. And what you, we need to do, we need your body to come out here, to take your eyes and look around and see where you can come in and help. Mm -hmm. I have some um, musicians that's, that have decided to volunteer their time mm -hmm. and to come play for the kids, drumming, uh, African dancing. My daughter, Ian Fryers, and she does audio, uh, Afri Africo, African cardio, cardio. Mm -hmm. And she's uh, volunteering also to help the children to learn how to move. Because that's what's wrong with us now. We don't move. We don't know how to get away from the video. The video games is okay, but video games all day is detrimental. And what we need to do is come out to Brooklyn Heights, 1833 Haynes Street, and come, and let's get busy. Okay, Mr. Franklin, uh, your program, uh, some of your, your inspirations in terms of what we're I, I'm in partner with Pearl Cone mm -hmm. here. In, in Nashville and also mm -hmm. with Austin East High School in Knoxville. Mm -hmm. one, of my, uh, my, one of my greatest passions to, to have them to start loving. Mm -hmm. uh, not just the immediate family, not just the, you know, the boyfriend and girlfriend, mm -hmm. start loving. Start loving yourself and push it out. And I have always, uh, I always had a passion to mentor, but I never had it like I have it now because my sister, uh, told me about how to, Richard, that's, that's you. You love mentoring. You love talking mm -hmm. to people. You love giving the people the best they have. Mm -hmm. Talk to them. And, and so I said, okay. Been doing it five years now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these young men are not bad. They are a representative of me and you and everybody else because no one took their time mm -hmm. to even spend an hour a day or an hour a week and say, hey, guess what? Mm -hmm. I got you because I love you. We're going to make sure you make it. You know, uh, so. this is the part of the program mm -hmm. uh, where it's not about us. It's about the, the unseen. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to prevent the violence mm -hmm. before violence mm -hmm. by just showing them love and giving them love back to mm -hmm. their hearts that's already within mm -hmm. and just try to push it out of them. And that's where Mo Better Life and Health mm -hmm. come in part, to have them start actually understanding the part of eating right mm -hmm. and the game of the fork and the knife. Mm -hmm. That's where the game is starting, mm -hmm. right there. Choosing the right foods, mm -hmm. having the right thoughts, listen to your heart. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where that love is. is always at. That's strong. Now, what can people do over the last uh, three minutes that we have here? What can people do in order to help you do what you're trying to do? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, all in all stars, uh, we haven't received any grant funding yet. Uh, so we, ba we basically just solely depending on the community right now. Um, you can do so uh, by logging on to our website at uh, www.allinallstars, with a Z, mm -hmm. uh, 360, uh, dot com. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a donation button on there. Um, you can also reach me at 615-573-6631. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, right now, we, we're going to be at Parkwood Community Center uh, mm -hmm. mentoring over the summer. Uh, on July 17th, we're going to have a, uh, our first uh, youth summit. Uh, physics is going to be the, uh, the overall subject. We're going we're to discuss music and can, whether music can control your thoughts and your actions or not. Okay, so we're just trying to spark uh, a deep subject matter uh, with the youth mm -hmm. today. Ms. Frison, what can uh, you do or what can the people do in order to help you? do what you're doing. Volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. Mm -hmm. And what they can do also is get in touch with me, Nella Frowson, N-E-L-L-A-F-R-I-E-R-S-O-N, mm -hmm. at yahoo.com. My phone number, 615-474-2887. We really need people to volunteer. We do more than just gardening. We do poetry. Mm -hmm. We ride bicycles. Uh, we teach them how to just be still, meditate. Uh, and so, um, but if you have any skills, even mm -hmm. teach them how to sew, mm -hmm. just come and just uh, volunteer. Mm -hmm. In other words, that's what we mean by community empowerment. Uh, people would be surprised at the kind of information that they have that can be shared with other folks. Uh, is that what you find to be true, Mr. Wright? Oh, most definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, one reason that they can actually do that, and I like for them to, to contact me every Thursday at 11 o'clock at Kimaline Bookstore on Jefferson Avenue, mm -hmm. we have a segment of, of uh, open mind, speak voice, mm -hmm. because we want them to speak their voice. We want them to start reading. We want them to find out who they are. We want them to start understanding the, the structure of the frustration that they have inside. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they can contact me, 615-200-3010 mm -hmm. at Mo Better Health, 
gmail at mobetterhealth gmail.com and uh, that's one of the main things that they can do just come by Kumalan bookstore mm -hmm. on Jefferson Avenue at, on Thursdays mm -hmm. at 11 o'clock and just sit come and speak and or just come and sit in and uh, find out what they can do to help their life to get better. Final statement, 30 seconds, uh, Noah. Yes, sir. Um, I'm just blessed and, and, and honored to be uh, on your show uh, this morning. And uh, so uh, all in want to cover as much ground as we possibly can. Uh, you know, we do plan on taking a program out of state uh, just as soon as we can get it. Uh, grounded here in Nashville. Very good. And let me thank the three of you for coming by and giving thank us that you, excellent sir. information. Thank and let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.